Hi, Taste Buds. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. I want you to take a good look in your cupboard or pantry. I'll bet you've got the makings, or most of them, for dinner in there right now. I'll show you what to look for today on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Good morning and welcome to SoFlo Taste in the Goya Kitchen here at J World in Coconut Creek. As we still try to grasp the new normal, what we once took for granted is no longer so. For instance, shopping, there can be empty shelves or only products you've never heard of. Well, today I'm going to cook with things I found just hanging out in my pantry and cupboards. And you may have some of these items too, or something kind of close to it. So today I thought it would be fun to cook with the ingredients I had anyway. So let's get cooking. The first thing we're gonna make are salmon patties. My mom always talked about salmon patties because my dad loved them. I think he probably still loves them. Um, something very 50s in style, kind of like crab cakes, and you can use crab or probably tuna in this, but it's actually delicious. So we're gonna take some fresh things. We've got some onions here. I'm gonna soften them a little bit in some olive oil on a nice low heat. These are yellow onions. And to that, I think I had, yeah, I had a jalapeno without the seeds. So I'm gonna add that in there as well. And just get that nice and soft. We're not looking for a lot of color. Okay, so here's the salmon. I basically just drained it and um, kind of picked it really well so that it's really nice and fine and put that to dry on a little piece of paper. So that goes in the bowl. My onions and jalapeno are nice and soft, so I'm just gonna add that right into the bowl. A little bit of mayonnaise goes into that as well. So I'll add some mayo that has a little bit of Dijon mustard in it. One egg. And then I've got some capers that I'm gonna chop up just a little bit. You don't have to, but I, I like it when you kind of find a little bit of a caper instead of a whole caper in something like this. So just chop it up roughly. Add that into the mix. And then we've got some fresh chopped dill as well as fresh chopped parsley. I've got some Coleman's mustard. We already have Dijon mustard in the mayonnaise. I always put a little bit of Dijon and a little bit of lemon in my mayo, but I thought a little Coleman's would be fun for flavor. The zest of a lemon. And go ahead and start to mix. And this should resemble something like a crab cake mixture would be like. Kind of creamy. Not too, too solid, but enough that it can come together. And the last binding ingredient in this are breadcrumbs. And we've chosen to use just a nice regular breadcrumb, no Italian flavoring or anything like that, no panko either. So a little bit of breadcrumb to pull that all together. Okay, I'm gonna mix this until it really comes together well. And this has to be really cold before you form the patties. Once we form the patties, I'll show you how to saute them really quickly and serve it with a really nice horseradish sauce. Come back, I have some lovely recipes that you won't believe how easy they are to make delicious that you might already have. Come right back. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Now, back to Michelle at the Goya Kitchen at JA World. 
welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We are here at JA World in Coconut Creek, whose mission when kids are back in school is to inspire and prepare youth to succeed in a global economy. For information about this great place, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to my cooking from the pantry show. White chili. So I have these beautiful white beans. I have some pulled chicken from a whole chicken. I've got these gorgeous green chilies. So let's cook the onions and garlic because there's lots of those in my house, that's for sure. Everything is diced really nice and small. Here's a yellow onion. And here's some minced garlic. So when it comes to the chicken, you can either poach a whole chicken in water or chicken stock, and then you'll use that chicken stock later for this chili. You can roast a whole chicken or you can buy a already rotisserie chicken if you can still find them. By the way, this chicken that I'm using today comes from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market at DelawareChicken.com. You can look up their website and see what's going on with them and how they're doing. Okay, so let's cook these onions and this garlic until they're really nice and soft. So when cooking a whole chicken, I don't bother with the wings. So after the wings are cooked, I usually either eat them myself or give them away. All the skin is removed and all the bones are removed. Like I said, the one great thing about poaching a chicken in chicken stock is that now you have this fortified chicken broth, which you can use in this or you can use in chicken soups. It's even more tasty. So there you go. All right, now that they're getting soft, it's time to give this thing a little bit of flavor. I have a little bit of ground cumin. I'm gonna use that. I've got chipotle. I have some dried ground red chipotle. Obviously, if you have canned chipotles and adobo, that adobo is delicious too, or the chipotles themselves are also always yummy. Ancho chilies are delicious too. And I have some dried oregano, which is delicious in chili too. Let me take that whole top off. Okay, so now we've got our flavor going, right? And that's, that's really the most important part of all this. So once you've toasted all those spices, let's go ahead and add our beans. Now I know this is a white chili, if you feel like adding some little diced tomatoes, that would be delicious too, but I thought it would be more fun and tasty to put a little bit of corn. Since I had some frozen corn, I thought that would be good in here. Okay, mm, I can really smell and <laughs> that aroma is just hitting me. That's wafting right up to my nose, it's delicious. All right, I'm just gonna start adding some chicken stock so that the beans start releasing their starchiness and this whole thing comes together into a chili. Now this can also be put in a crock pot, but why bother? I mean, we're all home. It's not like we're setting a crock pot and leaving. So this is easy and fast and delicious. All right, so I'm gonna add some of those hatch green chilies that I had a jar of. I think they're really spicy, so I'm gonna go a little careful with them. Yeah, these are spicy. So I'm gonna go like with a tablespoon of that. You know, this is the time to kind of play with the things that are in your pantry. I've had these for a little while now. When I was traveling, I bought them. And this is the time to kind of pull out those hot sauces and pull out some things that you haven't used, some of those chocolates that you might have bought in your travels, and use them now. Because once we're all done with this, we can go out shopping again and we can go out traveling again. I can't wait for that moment to happen. All right, so this now is all coming together. I can see that the bean starch is actually working. This is coming together. And I'm gonna add my chicken to it. And I'm gonna add the corn to it. And I have a little bit of fresh cilantro that I'm gonna go ahead and chop stems and all. I'm gonna use the whole darn thing. Not the rough stems on the bottom, but just close to the top. And very roughly, I'm not even gonna chop them very fine. And put them right in there, like so. 
a little bit of salt and go ahead and mix. Now, I had one ingredient I can't decide if I'm going to add, so I'm going to let this cook for a little while longer. I have some heavy cream. I had read about some white chilies having heavy cream. I think I'm going to let this go. Let's let this cook. Let's let this all come together and everything kind of macerate and get flavorful and delicious and thick. Come back, let's take a look at it. Let's decide together if I should put a little heavy cream. And then I have a very exciting recipe I can't wait to dig into, so come right back. You're watching SoFlo Taste. That shows you have good taste. taste we are social want to watch previous shows and by now you're probably looking for something to watch here's an easy way to do that just point your phone's camera at this quick response code or QRC tap the on-screen link and accept the app you want and you're in it can take you directly to the SoFlo taste YouTube page or check us out on Facebook or Instagram and be social easy huh now back to the food we have a lot going on and I decided just an update to add some heavy cream into that chili. Made it more white, more rich, more thick, and those green chilies, those hatch chilies I had never tasted before. The label was right, they were really spicy. So I added the cream and it just kind of softened everything a little bit and it's beautiful. So let me show you what this looks like. It is definitely not the chili you're used to seeing, but it is delicious. So here that is. And for nice toppings, I've got some avocado. I have some sour cream, if you like that sort of thing. I've got some lovely shredded cheddar. And then of course, where would I be without <laughs> some tortilla chips, right? For dipping in there. And there you have it, some lovely white chili, just to make everybody feel so kind of comforted and happy. All right, moving on. Enchiladas. I found this can of ranchero sauce. I was a little embarrassed by it. So I sauteed some onions, threw in a little smoked paprika, and added the ranchero sauce to it. And it's bubbling over there. And it actually isn't so bad. I added a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Pretty good now. So. Oh, by the way, I have limes for the chili in case you feel like you want some. It would actually go well in both things I'm making, but um, a lime would be yummy on that chili. So I took some hamburgers. I had frozen hamburgers in the freezer. I defrosted them. I kind of mixed them up a bit to soften it, and I am browning it right now. So that is my beef for my enchiladas. To that, I'm going to add some small diced onion and red bell pepper some green pepper and seeded jalapeno. And finally, a little bit of minced garlic. I have some adobo. I don't know if a lot of you have adobo at home. I think a lot of us do because we love the Latin flavor. So if you have adobo, I would add that. If you don't have adobo, grab some of your onion and garlic powder or granulated that you might have at home. I've got a little bit of cumin, which I know is an adobo, but I can never get enough. So I'm adding a little bit more cumin to that and let's mix it all up together. I decided to um, brown the beef before I added the onions and peppers to see if any residual fat would come out of them because if you add the onions and peppers first and then the beef it's harder to take the fat out but I guess my burgers were really lean because I didn't get any fat coming out of them. To make this a little more picadillo like I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste to it. It also helps the meat come together. Okay, I'm gonna shut off my ranchero sauce. That's been bubbling up for a little while, so I know that that's ready to go. You really wanna cook out a lot of the sweetness of the tomato paste. If you want, you can add a little bit of fresh cilantro or parsley if you're not eating cilantro. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. So let's go ahead and figure out how to roll all this up and make something yummy out of it. So we have some corn tortillas here. 
we have a little baking dish that's already been sprayed down, a ladle for our sauce, some grated cheese. If you want to have some fun with some olives, we have some black olives already sliced. Amanda, who loves enchiladas, who works with us here, she told me that the tortillas had to get warmed with a little bit of oil and that keeps them fastened together a little bit. I'm going to lay a little bit of the enchilada sauce down into the pan. So I'm warming up a little bit of oil here. I'm just going to dip it in. I'm letting it drip off. So a spoonful of the beef. Rolling that up and placing that down, seam side down into the sauce. I'm realizing why you warm up the tortillas in the oil, because if not, they're dry and they break if you roll them when they're too dry. Some more of this kind of picadillo. Roll it up. And you can make this with anything that you might have in your fridge or freezer. Um, ground chicken would be delicious. Brisket pulled would be delicious. Turkey. I can think of a million things that would go inside these things. Or you can do a vegetarian one if you have a lot of mushrooms at home or a mix of vegetables would be delicious as well. I personally love a little bit of chorizo. Actually, chorizo enchiladas would be delicious. Next time. All right, seam down again. I think I'll be able to fill about five, four to five of these in here. I'm going to top this with, as you see, a little bit of the ranchero sauce again. And then finally a ridiculous amount of cheese so that it kind of oozes around. And then I'm going to, I have these olives. I might as well just use them. It looks like we're having a taco party. I kind of love it. All right, I'm going to go in the oven, come right back. We're going to cook those salmon patties together, see how this craziness came out. Can't wait to try it all with you. Come right back. I'm design expert Elena Capra. Michelle's food looks great. Stay tuned to see a home that looks great on SoFlo Home Project coming up next. Welcome back to Cooking Out of Your Pantry. This is SoFlo Taste, and I am very excited because I have enchiladas cooking in my oven, and I'm forming salmon patties that actually smell delicious with the sauteed onions and the jalapenos and the dill. I have a small amount of oil in the pan, getting nice and hot. I'm using grapeseed oil, and we're gonna do a quick saute with this. And I didn't crust them with anything because I think that they're perfectly fine on their own and they form really easily. Now these can be formed, placed in your freezer, all wrapped up really nice and tight for months. You don't have to make them all if you don't want to, but these are great. And to think that I had these sitting in a little bag in my pantry for a while. Okay, for a little sauce, and I love little sauces, I have made a combination of prepared horseradish and sour cream. You can add a little bit of fresh dill to that if you want to as well. And that is right here. And that's just going to go down on the plate. And waiting for our salmon to be ready. Let's take a look at how they're looking. Oh, lovely. So yeah, I mean, they get really nice and golden just like a crab cake would. We want them to be really nice and golden all over. So I'm gonna lower the pan just a little bit to like a medium low heat. And let's take a look at our enchiladas. Look like they might be ready. Yep, they're bubbling and they look delicious. That's something else that can be served with fresh avocados or um, a little bit of sour cream, anything that you love with Southwestern style food would be delicious for that. I think they're kind of just delicious on their own as they are. Uh, let's come back to the salmon. And remember, if you find other things in your pantry that'll work on any of these, by all means, go ahead and add it into these recipes. Let's face it, I've gone a little bit off the cuff here 
and uh, made a lot of things that I normally wouldn't, but they're still delicious and fresh, and I'm excited to share them with my family. Well, that is another SoFlo taste for another week. Thanks for coming along. I hope that I gave you some inspiration to look inside your cupboards or pantry with a new eye, a new hungry eye. Now next week, just like all of you, I'm sheltering in my place. I'll be doing what a lot of you are doing, cooking outdoors. So join me as I give you another installment of cooking in the new normal. See you then in there. Now let's check in on my friend, Elena Capra. Good morning, Elena. What's up on Sofa Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Since we're spending a lot more time in our homes these days, wouldn't it be great if they were healthy environments? Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we tour a house full of home wellness technology, which is one of the hottest trends in design right now. Well, we can't wait. Thanks, Elena. Stay well. So Taste Buds, have a good week, and remember, your local restaurants need your support now more than ever. I'll see you next time here on SoFlo Taste. Goodbye and good taste. That's lovely.